Professor Yanlowski, uh, he will talk about new results in tax studies, experience theory methodology. This uh, paper is also uh, by Professor Yanlowski. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Catalysis is how to go through obstacles. And a couple days ago, I had huge obstacles. I was sick after my trip. My suitcases, air companies lost my suitcases, and I lost even my voice. But organizing committee helped me a lot. He played the role of catalysis, and now I'm able to say something. Otherwise, I could present my slides and say, look, they speak itself, okay? But my talk will be about results in depth studies, experiment methodology. What is about that? That is temporal analysis of product. In, uh, look, we need a tonically tailor of catalyst particles. It's about, it's about change, uh, program change of metal oxide particles by oxygen molecules, metal atoms, cluster nanoparticles. And then, uh, or we can use typical oxygen treatment using uh, uh, measuring oxygen uptake behavior, measuring oxygen desorption spectrum. Uh, and then, typical example, it's uh, butane oxidation over oxygen treated EPO, or typical catalyst, and we have malate anhydride production versus oxygen treatment type of disease, it's difficult. And what we have, it's optimal. We have a, a special 32 minutes oxygen treatment time, we have optimal selectivity. And all catalytic uh, experts, specialists know uh, there is optimal in, in three catalyst treatment. And we have to find this optimal treatment, we have to find optimal reacting conditions. Okay, and what we have now in this area, which is called this uh, term, which was coined by Dr. John T. Lees uh, in 1988. We have atomic beam deposition uh, on technical catalyst parts. What is that? We have laser beam and target transition metals source, and then molecules, laser hits this target, and molecules travel to catalyst particle, and catalyst, catalyst dancing, it's like special vibrated bag for achieving uniformity, and then we have, we know the amount of molecules deposited on this industrial particle, particles, industrial catalyst. Okay, and now this is like typical scheme, we have atomic beam deposition, this is like physically spot, laser, and then we are fabricating catalyst, and then we are using tap pulse response experiment to test this catalyst, and then we again modify this catalyst. Uh, now, this I used the uh, word temporal analysis of product. Now, what is traditional device temporal analysis of product uh, invented in 1988 in Monsanto company? and then in Washington University, in Washington University in St. Louis. This device consists of different parts. It is inner bed, this is active bed, again inner bed, this is high precise uh, wave system, system of waves, and then mesquite spectrum. And our measurements are exit flow versus time, and we are measuring products, reactant and product product versus time, pulse by pulse. So we have, we, we inject pulse of molecules into this bed, molecules travel through this bed, and then molecules are uh, measured by mass spectrometer, and conditions in bed, it's about 10 minus 3, 10 minus 4, so nothing different day. and then we are producing thousands of pulses. Okay, so, in this device, which is used uh, in uh, more than 15 groups in the world, it's, in fact, it's basis non-steady state, high throughput kinetic characterization. When we're talking now about combinatorial catalysis, we're talking mostly 
not mostly, 99% about steady state analysis. But the difference from that, uh, the temporary analysis product is non steady state, high throughput kinetic characterization. And what are our, our requirements? It's uniformity of gas and catalyst composition within the catalyst zone, otherwise, we don't know what is our catalyst. And then, change in catalyst is negligible during a single pulse. But catalyst composition can be precisely controlled, and we have well-defined transport. Diffusion coefficient doesn't depend on gas composition. So, in fact, uh, temporal analysis of product, its, it's a methodology of insignificant pulse by pulse change of catalyst. Pulse by pulse you change it. From, you know, from scientific point of view, it's just differential, differential method. You know, we can say even it's calculus invented by uh, Isaac Newton. Oh. So, this is like we have real pulse by pulse and pulse number. And what we measure, we measure different moments. Different moments, <coughs> zero moments in area under curves. And we are measuring, using the zero moments, we are measuring typical chemical characteristics. We measure the conversion, selectivity product yield, but then we are extracting also residence time, of course, of course, diffusion of residence time. And we, we have methodology and theory which was developed since uh, 1995, and we are measuring apparent rate constant and apparent time delay for every pulse and for every reaction. So, this is like a real example. It's a uh, conversion of yields and furan. Uh, furan is uh, it, it reacts with oxygen treated with your catalyst. Then we have malleic hydride plus CO plus CO plus CO2 plus CO plus acrylic acid. And pulse by pulse, during the, you know, 10,000 pulses, they're measuring all these chemical characteristics. They're measuring furan conversion, malleic hydride, they're measuring acrylic acid. CO2 and CO. So this is the result of 10,000 multiplied by 5. Okay. And then we are, we are analyzing this data. We are analyzing this data and we are pulse by pulse measuring conversion. And then we know exactly how many molecules of reducing agent for N we are, we are converting. This is for N molecules converted from gram DPO, 1080. And then Knowing that, we are introducing scale of catalysts. We are talking a lot about how characterize catalysts, but catalyst state. But first of all, we need to introduce catalyst scale, because without scale, there is no characterization. In this case, catalyst scale is total amount converted for it. And we go from complete oxidation to complete reduction. Then we introduce the scale from 0 to 1, Get the saturation between, and we, 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 present, we present conversion yield and yield as a function of catalyst saturation yield. Uh, then we are using this equation. Uh, this equation in this general form, probably introduced by uh, Professor Tomkin. It's from Foren to you know all these reactors, and this stoichiometric coefficient includes selectivity, and then we can use this equation to find amount of oxygen taken from sources. So now we're plotting oxygen atom consumed from sources versus catalyst separation degree. And then we introduce, we know, for, we know if using different reactants, we have, for foreign, we have at 7, uh, 19, 10, 18, we are using uh, this different, different amounts of foreign but if we calculate this amount of oxygen, we have the same oxygen, uh, the same oxygen uh, amount of uh, atoms. So, uh, after that, we can extract many coefficients, uh, apparent coefficients uh, from uh, this data. But it's primary data which we have in this pulse response technique. This is our main device. It's called Seal Zone Cat Reactor. It proposed about seven years ago uh, 
student Shekman and me and I because he's invited. So what does it this is like dimensionless gas concentration, dimensionally oxyl can coordinate. So we have transformation only in this thin zone, it's about one tenth of this length. Because of this zone is narrow, we can consider it's uniform. It, it, it's uniform, the entire uh, composition, gas composition and catalyst composition. Okay. And then we have a single idea of uniformity. This is concentration is the same. And then a rate in this case is different from rate in our favorite uh, uh, perfect mixing and differential reactor. In this case, rates is different of diffusion of flows, diffusion of flows, not, con not conventional flows. Because of that, you can say, what is the interesting difference between synzone catheter and CSCR? Uh, difference in similarity. In, in our device, uniformity is ensured by diffusion. You know, typically, when I started this war, I considered diffusion is any of kinetics, and we need to eliminate diffusion. But in this case, diffusion creates a perfect mix. But what about conversion? What about conversion? Conversion, uh, surprisingly, it's a equation which is similar to our traditional CSTR. It's constant multiplied by residence time, unity from constant multiplied by residence time. But residence time, it's not convectional, it's diffusional residence time, which is related to the famous uh, Einstein equation. Okay, but if you compare, if you compare TZTR, this differential flux flow rate, differential flux flow rate, the also interesting difference is known the differential flux flow reactor provides not so big uniformity, not, not more than, we are allowed to do measurements not more than 20%. In difference from this, our TZTR provides uniformity at conversion uh, up to 80%. Because our rate, it's not the same rate as the traditional differential PFR. Our rate is difference between diffusion of flow, between gradients, not between concentration. So, let's go back to, uh, to our data. Uh, this is data from Fourier oxidation. We extracted kinetic constant, kinetic constant using very simple equation. It's conversion divided by unity minus conversion divided by residence time. And we have a parent constant for all reactants and products versus catalyst oxidation degree. Look at this. This is constant, not constant. The change is a function of catalyst oxidation degree. Also, this constant very different for all products. It's first fingerprint. We have different rules for this product. Then, this constant includes number of empty sites, empty sites which we count like integral, as integral characteristic. And we can easily divide constant by number of empty sites, non-steady state. And we have so-called non-steady state terminal frequency. This is right here. And this terminal frequency, and this terminal frequency, and also non-steady state. Uh, they also change in very we start. Okay. So, and then there's extremely interesting uh, characteristic time delay. What is that? This characteristic is extracted from integral characteristic as well, from first moment and second moment. And physical meaning uh, apparent time delay is quite simple. If we compare apparent time delay for reactant and product, and this apparent time delay is small, or we can say close to zero, because we can say it's, it's one reaction, it's a direct mechanism, individual reaction. But if it's uh, not, not small, it means difference between apparent time delay, which is equal to not zero, means you have intermediate. And look at this apparent del time delay for difference for N, and A, and, and CO2. Typically, it's in, in white uh, oxidation degree domain, it's not zero. We always have intermediate. After that, we can say for every root, I, I, I 
I told you about different roles. Every root is characterized by specific intermediate, and then we can say for all reactant apparent time delay is different, at least four intermediate involved. And then we, are, we express consideration for the mechanism in the The rules difference between apparent energy constant with fingerprint for different reaction rules, and then apparent time delay of gas reactor with fingerprint of surface intermediate presence. In this characteristic depends on the chemical state. After that, we, we have formulated it's it's like it's complicated mechanism, but it's not too complicated. It's mechanism which directly relates to our experimental data. And after that, we are uh, you know are going to find constant, typically constant, find constant. So all this activity is called state by state kinetic chemical scheme or show me state. It's by the way slogan of our state Missouri. First, we are introducing Catherine's scale, presenting conversion yields versus amounts of consumed, released, removed oxygen. We are introducing dimension scale, and we know how to relate our conditions. Then we present the scale, we extract the kinetic characteristic, apparent kinetic constant, and time delays as a function of Catherine's scale. And, and then we are looking at this constant as, as a function of uh, oscillation degree. And after that, we are com comparing different kinetic characteristics, apparent kinetic constant and time delays. We are presenting the uh, concept framework of mechanics. Okay. So and we are, now we are uh, we uh, develop this uh, and apply in many cases state by state kinetic screening based on moments integral characteristic of pulse response. It gives average characteristic for parts. But recently, we developed procedures, old white procedure, which allow us to obtain kinetic characteristics <coughs> gas concentration and rates at any moment of pulse response. And I present you such characteristic rate as a function of concentration for non-steady state case. For non-steady state case. It's approximately, fortunately, is its line as we expected, but this line is changing during the, during the uh, reduction, during the change of category state. Okay, so, and why procedures, just, why procedures, uh, in fact, it's a kind of uh, back problem of diffusion, and we are going uh, from our exit floor, and then, calculating our diffusion problem back, and then we find exit flow for our active zone, right boundary, and then we consider concentration in active zone the same, and then knowing concentration in left boundary, we are counting uh, diffusion equation, calculating diffusion equation in left boundary, so we know exit flow is this, and exit flow is this, and subtracting uh, exit flow right from exit flow left, we have rain. So this is like software which is what? It's like commercial software. In fact, it's result of my talk, and this work is supported by NSF, National Science Foundation, and uh, unfortunately I, I have no picture of my collaborants, but it is Rebecca Fushini, Sandy Shepman, Mike Rood, and Eugene Redeco. And of course, uh, I'm very thankful to uh, organizing committee of this Boresco conference because I immediately expressed my opinions in Philippines because I consider uh, Dr. Boresco was a great teacher, in fact, of the, I can say one of the greatest uh, teacher in catalysis area for, for all, all times of history of catalysis. Thank you.
propane oxidation. So, what catalyst did you tell him? Uh, video, typical video okay. I see. Thank you. Yeah. For propane. For propane, for propane, we use, we use, you know, standard, uh, standard video. video. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Now we have coffee break and the next session will be resumed.